Having been on a campervan adventure to Iceland to do landscape photography earlier this year, I thought it'd be a nice little video with some tips and you can plan your own adventure. There's some things we did well and some things we wish we knew before going. So grab your notebook and hopefully this will stop you from making the same mistakes we did and help you to get the most out of your adventure. Now, you'll most likely be landing in Keflavik Airport and the easiest way to get to Reykjavik if you're not picking up a rental vehicle is by bus. They run frequently from right outside arrivals, are comfortable, cheap and take you into the centre where you can catch another bus or jump in one of the many taxis from that bus station in Reykjavik. In my opinion, the best way to see Iceland is in a camper van. You have the ultimate freedom to explore the island and you can change your plans whenever. This is important to note because the weather can change quickly. Obviously in winter this is more severe than in the summer, but you must always be on top of the conditions not only to get the most out of your photography, but to stay safe as well. Of course, plan ahead and know beforehand all of the locations you would like to photograph. Having a list of locations rather than a strict itinerary will be beneficial to flex based on where you can or can't go or which locations would photograph better in different conditions. So for each location, I know beforehand whether it's better at a sunrise or sunset, moody clouds or any of the three. Always have a few rainy day spots in your back pocket. And there's likely to be a couple of those to be fair. Uh, making sure you stay safe and don't get cut off is important. Safetravel.is offer an app or have the same information on their website. Mostly we used Vegagra, however it's pronounced, I'll put it up here. Um, it has up to date alerts for weather, including wind speed and direction and volcanic eruptions or earthquakes. It's, it's amazing how easily um, you can tell the conditions of all the roads with their, with their grading systems from clear to spots of ice to slippery to impassable. It's worth noting that your hire vehicle insurance probably doesn't cover you if you stray onto roads deemed impassable and you may even be charged for every kilometre down an impassable road you travel. Use webcams to check roads too and the weather conditions where you're intending to go. This is a really good tip and one we used quite a lot when we were out there. And webcams are a great resource for making up or changing plans on the fly. Then you have the infamous F-Roads. I've never been on one because when we went at the end of March, at the start of April, it's still winter and they were impassable, forbidden to drive on. And we only had a two wheel drive van. It's mandatory to have a four wheel drive vehicle to go onto the F roads. Some of which have river crossings, which we were told by our van rental company are not covered under any insurance they offered. So cross at your own risk. Now on to parking. Most places will charge you for parking, especially bigger tourist sites. In all the ones we went to, you either paid using contactless on our card or using um, the parker.is app. Um, so it's all cashless. Lastly, get a map of all the campsites so you can plan on the fly where you want to go. There is absolutely no wild camping allowed in Iceland so you have to stay on a campsite every night. There are some lists you can download online and add to your Google Maps so you've got it on your phone, or most rental companies can often provide you with a map of their own. Uh, note that there are less campsites open during winter, however, so be extra careful planning a winter adventure. You may have larger distances to cover between spots to settle down every night. So money and shopping. We didn't use cash once, um, never saw one Icelandic krona the whole time we were there. We just used contactless payments with a card or Apple Pay everywhere from buying a beer in Reykjavik to paying for camping and coffee on the other side of the country. So don't worry about that. So getting essentials while traveling around. Uh, camping gas can be bought at most petrol stations and visitor centers. We never had a problem getting gas when we needed a top up. Plenty of supermarkets around Iceland um, too, but the bigger ones are around Reykjavik. So maybe stock up with the essentials when you're in Reykjavik and then top up your fresh food supply from the smaller ones as you travel around. What to wear? 
Okay, so I'm going to talk about winter attire because that's when we went. Obviously, you're going to want warm clothes, so layer up appropriately. Pack a set of thermals or two, depending on how long you're going. You can wash your stuff as you're going around the campsites. There are laundry services available. Uh, a down jacket that's also windproof is a great choice. Note the windproof. And also make sure you have something waterproof like a shell jacket and over trousers. Then there's footwear. Make sure you have decent, sturdy footwear. The amount of tourists we saw in fluffy moon boots, not just getting ruined in snow and mud, and, but they were always on the verge of having a serious fall. It was crazy. Don't bother taking a scarf. 90% of the time in Iceland, it's super windy, and you'll find that one or both ends of the scarf is constantly trying to take your eyes out. Buy a nice snood and be done with it. Uh, and lastly, crampons or micro spikes. If you're going to spend a lot of time on the ice, then maybe you want to buy them. Um, you might be able to rent them while you're there. There are places that rent certain equipment, like camping equipment. Um, we saw that in the bus station where the bus took you uh, from Reykjavik, from Keflavik into Reykjavik. Um, but we went to Kirkjafech for one day. Um, it was snowy. I didn't have crampons, but we didn't travel very far, so we didn't really need them. But uh, maybe if you're going to travel further on ice, um, going in deep winter, then to be safe, maybe get yourself some micro spikes. What other things should you pack? Tissues. <laughs> the cold weather gave me a constant runny nose and uh, just keep a travel pack with you at all times to avoid frozen snot. In the same vein, um, take moisturizer and lip balm. You'll be spending a lot of time outdoors, in the wind, in the colder months, you'll dry out pretty quickly. So don't let that beautiful skin of yours become a flaky mess. This might be obvious, this next point, but take some plastic tubs for storing food, pack, pack your own plastic little baggies with herbs and spices uh, for cooking on the go, rather than buying everything when you get to Iceland because food there is rather expensive. We rented our van from Cozy Campers and they have a fridge and some shelves for leftovers from previous people's journeys. Um, and you can take from that whatever you want. It's uh, a free for all, basically. Uh, one thing that might be good to try and find on those shelves is cooking oil, because you don't really want to buy a whole liter if you're gonna be there for two weeks. You're never gonna use it all. But obviously uh, what you don't use, you can leave when you finish your trip. So waste not, want not, as my mother always used to say. Another thing, if you're going to be in a camper van, take some bungee cords. They are amazingly useful for like hanging wet clothes, um, securing stuff on the sides of the van. Really useful things, bungee cords. Take some with you. When you're in the camper van, park into the wind. So the wind will be hitting your windscreen. It might make it difficult to open your doors, but they won't fly off into someone else's car and rip your arm out of the socket at the same time, speaking from experience. Now onto cooking. If you have one, take a jet boil. This saves you getting a big stove out every time you want a cup of tea, which if you're British like me, is pretty often. Um, and also rent an inverter from the camper van company. So you can charge your camera batteries and your laptop from a plug whilst on the move rather than a 12 volt socket. We had no problem running the fridge, charging phones, camera batteries, drone batteries, laptop, iPad, whilst traveling around for the 10, 11 days that we had the van. And lastly, a lot of the campsites we went to, like the ones in Thingvellir, Skogafoss, and Skaftafell, allowed us to pay on the following morning. This was perfect for us, because we could stay out late, we could catch a sunset, catch the aurora, head to the camp and camp for the night, and then just pay in the morning. But do check with each campsite what they do and do not allow. All right, this might be the bit you're waiting for. Photography tips. Um, if you want to know more specifics about each location, or a bunch of locations that I've been to at least, then I have three vlogs on Iceland already on my channel. It's playing in the background right now. But here are some general tips for you. Sand is always a nightmare when it comes to getting stuck in photography equipment. Black sand is on another level though. 
it's magnetic, so be very careful with your drone. The motors will attract the black sand, as well as any magnetic lenses and adapters and lens caps. A few times we spent a while trying to remove black sand from the filters and the magnetic clasps on the back of my DJI mics, for example. It's a bit of a nightmare, so be careful in the black sand. A rain cover for your bag is not just for rain, but there will be spray from the many millions of waterfalls that you'll be photographing whilst in Iceland. General rule, the further away from Reykjavik you are, the quieter it will be. Vestrahorn Stockness is about six hours, I think, away from Reykjavik by car, which is far too long for a day trip coach. Skogafoss, on the other hand, is only two hours away. So from between eight to 9 a.m. onwards at Skogafoss, it'll be getting coach load after coach load of people turning up. If you wanna get a nice shot without hundreds of selfies in the foreground, then get there early or stay late. I use my drone whilst in Iceland, but like most countries, you're not allowed to fly in national parks, so definitely not really around Thingvellir. Uh, and most scenic beauty spots like Skogafoss and Seilandafoss have no drone signs. Um, I don't think we required any extra special license. I fly a DJI Air 3, but do check your particular drone and wait before you fly out. And that's about it. If you haven't checked out my vlogs from Iceland, Please do, I had a lot of fun making them and hopefully they inspire you to take up your own Iceland landscape photography adventure. If you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. And as always, I appreciate a like and a subscribe. Costs you nothing, but gives me oodles of joy to see that little number going up. Um, happy to have you in the community if you do join. I'll see you in the comments section or in the next video.